Hello everybody, last week I did a short video on how to use a Silhouette Cameo 4 to cut out canopy masks. This time around, following week, I'm going to use a Cricut machine, the Explorer Air 2. Now, full disclaimer, I returned my um, Silhouette machine, I bought a Cricut, and in the basic video I'll explain the reasons why, and um, to be honest, a lot easier, and I'm really happy with this machine. So, slight nuances, um, the software is very basic on this one, so we're using a um, freeware version to kind of get the, the, the file ready to cut. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and um, I'll walk you through a few steps. Again, less than five minutes to cut a canopy mask. Okay, so here we are in Inkscape, a freeware. I'll put a link below to download it. It's going to open up your mask template or your file into Inkscape. Uh, it'll just take a few, few seconds to open up, and there'll be a dialog box that pops up. I just hit OK. And then just give the, the, the file a little nudge, just left and right, and that, somehow that triggers the preview. Um, it doesn't Preview doesn't pop up otherwise. Then on the threshold bar, just as we did last week with the silhouette machine, just moving the threshold bar, you know, left and right until I get in that preview, I get my solid kind of um, black line. Once I've got that, I'm gonna hit apply. I'm gonna drag the yellow original document away and delete it and left with the tracing of the lines. Um, as you can see there, nice dark black lines. And then I'm just gonna save it as an SVG file. And then we're gonna open it up into the Cricut design software here. So it's going to hit upload. Um, you're going to upload your file. I've already have it here, so skip a few steps. But upload it and um, bring it into the design software. Yep, and just add to the canvas. And what I'm going to do now is basically scale it. So as you mentioned last video, just measured um, with some digital calipers the top to the bottom of the front canopy, which I know is 12 millimeters. And I'm just going to basically resize that to match it. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just going to crudely, quickly, just going to re resize it. And then move it to the top left of the sheet where I want to cut it. If you're going to print out a bunch of these masks, once you're done, you can just copy and paste them all and you can print, you know, 10, 10 at once if you wanted to. Um, so here we're going to hit the contour button on the bottom right. If the contour button is grayed out, it means um, we have that you haven't done that step in Inkscape. Um, you can't do it. So basically, you've got to go to Inkscape to get the, the out, out, out of barrier, out of lines. So then you can use that contour tool. So I'm clicking contour, and then I'm just basically selecting everything I don't want to cut out. I'm going through all, it basically gives you all different shapes and different cuts. Um, so basically, I don't want to do the wheels. So all the white round ones, I'm just you know, deselecting, and you can see there in the, in, on the screen behind, on the top left, it's just removing it from the cut sheet. Um, and then I basically want to make sure all the canopy sections, the mask sections, I just want like the whole, just want a whole like blacked out area to cut around the outside. I don't, because the lines are pretty thick, it might try to cut two lines, or it might kind of do some fancy kind of stuff. So just going through each of these shapes, and you know, checking my drawing here on the left, um, and just deselecting or selecting so I'm left as you can see the three windscreen sections and now working through the canopy sections I just want again just want the blacked out one if it disappears i am clicked the wrong button so I just reselect it and you get the idea there um, just going through and uh, make sure each of those segments is kind of in, is kind of filled into a section because then the cut, cut will just cut around the edge of it and it won't cause any kind of issues so almost done, I think one more piece left to go here and select the right one and um, connects it out of the screen. And there we are, it's gonna give you a template and it's gonna cut around the shaded areas and give you a canopy mask. So again, just moving it around where I want it on the cut mat. Um, you can move anywhere on the mat, the mat's 12 by 12, the ones I'm using. And from here, I'm just gonna hit, um, send it to the machine. Oh, I think I missed one or two out here. You know, I think I'm just checking, make sure. I think there's a little bit of writing in the corner for some reason I couldn't get out. Um, so here is going to send it to the machine. Make it is the button you're going to click. And it gives you this view. And um, again, I'm just going to wiggle it around the map just to make sure it's, you know, it's inside the, the, the barriers. And here's the machine. So I'm just going to hit open on the machine, turn it on. And um, it's going to fire up. And I'm going to take my mask, as, as before, I'm using the Oracle Aura Aura Mask 810, which works really good. 
And again, I'll put a link below as I did last week of where you can purchase this if you're in the US. There's only really one vendor I know of. Um, the sheets aren't very expensive. I think it's back a dollar for a um, 12 by 12. So move to vinyl setting on the machine. And you can see there, I just flip back and you saw what it does on the screen. Um, and there it is, the Euromask 810. Just gonna peel off the, um, this is a low tack mat. Um, definitely like low tack, otherwise everything just was ridiculously hard to remove. So I get my mat and just gonna stick my mask on it. Kind of just square it up. So my masking sheet goes on and just gonna feed it into the computer, into the printer, should I say. Um, just press the button that's flashing. It's gonna feed it in. And then you're going to press the flashing C button in the middle. So it's super easy, you know, very intuitive system. And that's it. It's going to cut it. So on the screen, it's going to give you a percentage of cut. We're just going to flick back in a minute. And you'll see my, my screen. That's my cat trying to get involved here, my kitten. So I pull away. And you see there, we're going through, you know, it's showing on the screen how far along we are. Here, this bit I just sped up on the on the um, editing software, so you're not going to sit for a couple of minutes. But really, it cuts pretty quickly. Um, but this is sped up a few times. And then once it's done, it's going to feed it out. Just going to press that flashing button again. It's going to eject it. And there's the mask. It's really, really hard to see, probably, on the camera. You know, it's shiny, light shining on it. Um, but you get an idea, I think, there, you know, some score lines, it cuts it really well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a weeding tool out and just pull a piece off just so you can kind of see the cut. But, um, yeah, very happy with this. I think it cuts definitely better than the Silhouette Machine. Um, no problems at all. This is just a generic blade that came with it. And you can see there as I peel a piece off, you know, how well it cuts it. And, um, yeah, no problem at all. So, yeah, there we go. That's easy as that, less than 45 minutes. All right, so there we go. And you can see it's relatively easy so return the silhouette machine falling around with it and um, for a few weeks and just returned it so reasons why um, it was just so difficult to use it wasn't being very temperamental I couldn't get the Bluetooth to connect properly it was just wouldn't cut um, I don't want this just for canopy masks I want it for kids crafts and stuff as well and when we sat down with the kids trying to print out stickers it was yeah it was really complicated to use the silhouette machine this is um, it wouldn't cut where it's supposed to, it wouldn't follow the registry marks, it wouldn't register the points. It was always cutting stuff about half an inch too high and half an inch too left. Stickers couldn't do it. Um, so I just thought, you know what, let's just return it. It's a women's return policy, get a cameo, um, get a, a cricket machine and just try it and see. Um, so I got the cricket machine, had less than 24 hours and um, real easy. So I would say it's kind of like an iPhone, my analogy. So an iPhone in the terms you just turn it on, Sets up in a couple of minutes, real easy, simple, few buttons, simple, few settings, but just works. Um, works to a great standard and it's just simple to use. I didn't need a degree in physics to figure out a bunch of settings like I did with the Silhouette. So, sure, I'm sure the Silhouette's a more advanced machine and you can do all kinds of crazy stuff with the settings, but for what I need it, um, pretty basic stuff, this was a machine for me. So, I misspoke last week when I talked about the Silhouette um, and um, the difference between that and the Cricket machine. I said only Silhouette machine has Bluetooth. That wasn't incorrect. My This machine right here, the Cricut Explore Air 2, has Bluetooth as well. It seamlessly connected immediately. And um, as you saw in the video, it's working off Bluetooth, no cables or nothing. And also works with your cell phone as well. So again, talking about earlier, you know, I couldn't get that Silhouette machine to connect. This was no problem at all, immediately connected. Um, so yeah, price difference as well. This machine, um, the, the Cricut machine, the, the Explore Air 2, I think it retails around between 200 and 229 on Amazon or Michaels. I went to Hobby Lobby uh, the last few weeks checking these things out and they've always been 149.99. So I'm not sure my local Hobby Lobby just has just mispriced it or if that's just the price they sell them for, but 150 bucks um, from Hobby Lobby. And um, like I said, that price has been around for a while. It's not a sale price or anything. And um, yeah, usual thing. They had a little card with the price on um, in, the, in the Cricut kind of aisle took it up to the register, paid, and then somebody brought it back from the um, stock room, whatever, and gave it to me. So, yeah. So there we go. So there's some of the reasons why I just find the machine, I think, I don't know, just, you can't really tell the camera, but it just cuts easy. And when I looked at it, it just, it cut really well, nice crisp cuts. And um, yeah, as long as you use some software outside of it, um, like I did with the, um, the software I use, which the link will be below, so you can download it. Um, it's no problem at all. You just, we're using that software for it just to, bring the file in and cut it basically. And um, there we go. So 
yeah, again, so a bit of a change from last week. Um, hopefully nobody ran out last week and bought the Cameo 4. If you did, maybe you'd love it, maybe you're different to me. Um, but I think it takes a lot, a lot of learning and a lot of um, research and reading up on it. Whereas this cricket machine, just plug it in, push the button and you're good to go. Um, yeah, so that's it. Um, I Hopefully this one's around for a while. I don't think I'll be doing another video next week with another machine. I'm pretty happy with this Cricut um, Explorer 2 and I'll um, be using all my upcoming builds to create masks, um, both canopy masks and um, canopy masks. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this little video and I'll catch you next time. Bye.